Hello and welcome to the February update here at Reesby Estates and on the farm. So February sees the final month of winter finally moving into spring at the beginning of March so um, the long winter is finally almost over and as we head, in, head into spring we start to get the first signs of life moving um, you can already see the snowdrops coming out daffodils starting to push up but on the farm we can start to see the crops wakening up and we start to get the demand for nitrogen to help them grow away from the cold winter so in this month we will look actually at the planning of nitrogen applications on some oil seed rape what goes on behind the scenes to work out how much nitrogen we need to be applying to them but before we get to there some stats on sort of february as a whole on what we had so we had 35.9 millimeters of rain in february so that is good february can be known as february fill dike where you can get a lot of rains and it tops all the water levels up and the dikes are full but this february has not been the case it's actually been a relatively dry february the dikes are fairly low and actually the land drains aren't running so on our previous video you would have seen talking about uh, field capacity and the land drains running we are no longer actually at that field capacity because the land drains have stopped running it'll take a little bit of moisture to get us back to there but we're not far away um we had a high of 16.8 on the 21st of february uh very warm for a february day and we had a low of minus 2.7 back on the 5th of February when we had that spell of cold conditions which is good for the farm so if we get a, a, a spell of cold weather it can kill a lot of the pests off the aphids off so and some diseases on the crop so it's nice to see getting some proper cold weather the actual average temperature was 4.8 here at Reedsby during the month of February so like I said in this update we're going to look at the fertilizer um, we haven't done any drilling yet we've held off even though it's been relatively dry the soil temperatures have been too cold we really want to see them um, above five degrees and, and steady above five degrees so we're a bit too cold that will happen into march um a lot of grain has been moving out of the sheds a lot of wheat's been moving a lot of oats have been moving and then a lot of barley's going in march so the lads have been busy um moving the grain out so let's go and take a look at this planning of this nitrogen okay so i'm going to look at building a variable rate nitrogen plan for our oil seed rate now to do this with oil seed rate we're looking to build what we call the green area index to a number of three and a half so we're going to use some technologies to measure the actual gai green area index of the rape across the field now it's well proven to get to that uh, three and a half, we're looking at applying 50 kilos of nitrogen for each extra GAI that we need. So we're probably going to see the GAIs of the oil seed rate somewhere around one or sort of 0.6. So then we can work out we need to be at three and a half um, to sort of pre-flowering. So we can then work out how much nitrogen we need to put on to push them to that three and a half just before we get to flowering. So let's take a look at some of the technologies that help us get to that decision. So the first step, what I do is to go on to our, um, a program called the Contour System, which is run by Agri. And this is satellite imagery. Now we're looking at these fields just here. These are my rate fields. And what we're looking at here is an NDVI. So that is a Normalized Difference Vegetation Index. It's actually looking at near infrared and red light. Um, the red light uh, vegetation absorbs, whereas the near infrared, it um, reflects. So basically the darker the greens is showing where we've got more um, leaf area and the lighter colors, we've got less leaf area. Um, so we can see in these fields here, if we just zoom in um, and for example, concentrate on this field, this would be showing me that we've got more green area down here and we've got less leaf area up here. So it's showing me there is some differences across the field, but currently that's all that's really showing me. It doesn't really mean a lot more, 
but I can now take that information and put that into our drone system because our drone will then go and scan these zones and actually work out what GAI we've got. So I will actually take the drone and fly it on this field here. And we will then be able to interpret what these colours are telling us in terms of the green area index. So here we go. This is the field now in the drone app. So this is by Drone Ag. It's uh, an app called Skippy Scout. If we overlay the image, there we go. We overlaid the image provided by the satellite technology, what we've just seen. And where we've got all the various differences, I put a point. The little white disc is every single point where I want the drone to go and have a look at and take me a photo, which it will then analyse with AI to tell me uh, the condition of that oilseed rape. It'll tell me to GAI, so there we can work out an accurate application of nitrogen needed. So here is our field of rape, and I've got the drone just positioned here, just sat ready to go, and it's going to automatically now fly this field, go to them points, drop down to about um, a metre, two metres above the crop and take the image and then use AI to determine the growth stage of that crop. So let's set it going and see what it does. So I'm now in the app which is about to fly the drone. So I'm just setting it up. You can see we look for the field. There we go. There's our points. We will now connect to the drone. We haven't got any connection, it's just booting up, then you'll see all the red crosses start to go green. We've got battery life, we've got a signal, just checking the, the camera's working. And then once we've got that, we are good to go. So all looks good, we can now go and fly the drone. So you can see it's predetermined path. The dotted line will where it'll head out, it'll then go to all those points and come back and land. So here we are as we, a, a lovely view over the countryside there, as the drone makes its way to its first point. And then I can flick back on to the map here. And you see the green dot moving, that is the drone heading out to the first of the uh, scouting points. Flick over onto the camera, and you can now see the drone lowering down onto the field and onto the rape where it's going to take its picture. So as it gets to about two meters above the crop, it just stands still, takes a quick snapshot and then head on, heads on to the next plot. Here we go, you can see the individual rape plants there, hovers there, take a picture and then it'll quickly whiz back up. That's it, one plot has been sampled and it'll now make its way. You can see it going across. If you flick back on to the image, little green dot moving there, and there it goes. Now you can see on the left there, we've done one of 12 plots. So we've got 12 plots to do. It's just on the way, doing its second plot, and that'll be two of 12. So we'll leave it to it to do its thing, and we'll join it towards the end. So now, the drone's just moving on to its final plot. It's doing 11 of 12. It's just dropping down now, doing its final 12th plot. And then it will automatically return home and land back in the point which it took off from. So here we go now, the drone's coming home. And you can see there, it's just given a warning not to turn off because what it is doing, it is now downloading all them images it's taken up onto the drone ag's servers so they can use the AI to determine what that drone has seen, how much rape area we've got, any weeds, any disease, um, and such like. So we'll let the drone do its thing and return home. So you've just seen the drone flying there, um, and then I get this report come back to me. And off every single point, so here we've got scout point four, um, which was down here in the field. And what you can actually see, it's hard to see here, but in each of these boxes is the rape plant. This is AI at work picking out how many rape plants there is. That's the actual image it took. And then 
there we go the little red one is telling me that there's an actual weed and when we look at the top here we've got nine percent ground cover we've got um four plants a meter squared and we've actually got this is the important thing a gai of, of 0.18 so around a 0.2 um, green area index it's predicting we need to apply 237 kilos of nitrogen per hectare however we won't apply all of that because there is a certain amount being provided by the soil and we'll do a soil mineral nitrogen test to get a, a feel of how much nitrogen is coming back from the soil and that's probably going to be somewhere around the 40 kilo mark so we'll probably end up having to put about 190 kilos of nitrogen onto this but this is just showing you some of the science in the background which is working out how much um, nitrogen needs to be put on. So now I know what each of them colours was sort of telling me on that first um, plan because the drone's flown over it. It's told me what the GAI is in all them different zones. So I can now bring that back to here. So this is the nitrogen planning zone. Remember, we're looking at this field here. This is where we've got the red, where we've got very low canopy. The darker blues means we're aiming at more nitrogen on. Here's where we set the limits. We're targeting 307 litres a hectare, which is putting about 111 kilos of nitrogen on, allowing it to run up to 446, which is 162. Remember, its maximum it, it was putting on um, was somewhere up, the, uh, up near the 250 mark. And then we're dropping 112 litres, is actually putting us 40 kilos of nitrogen on. So it's varying these lighter bits here, we're only getting the 40 kilos, and the darker bits here are getting the um, 162 kilos of nitrogen. So across the whole of that field, we're varying the nitrogen depending what the green area index was, aiming to get us up to near to the three and a half. So yeah, I send this information out to the sprayer now. It then applies as per that map. I will then fly the drone again uh, mid-March to see how that has leveled the canopy. We're trying to level this canopy out to three and a half. We'll be a lot closer to it come the next flight. It might show us that some zones don't need any nitrogen at all, and some zones are just needing a little bit more to push them to that three and a half ideal canopy. By the end of March, we'd hope to have all this nitrogen onto the, uh, onto the um, plants. So, so a lot of steps are taken there to actually get us to a nitrogen plant. We start, we've taken a soil sample. We know what nitrogens are in the um, soil. I've just had them results back and they are about 40 kilos. What reckon is going to come available to that crop? We know where our green area indexes are. We know we're aiming at three and a half. We're looking, we're somewhere there, sort of, we're actually quite low for the time of year now at sort of 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. So it's going to need pushing a bit to build the canopy. Um, there's a very well trusted um, formula to show you how much nitrogen you need to get to that three and a half um, um, GAI. So we're going to apply the first round of nitrogens now on that variable rate map, then come back and truth it again with the drone, just like we saw us flying there to see how close we are and see if there's any areas what need topping up. So this is a good way of making sure we're only putting the nitrogen exactly where it's needed to benefit the crop and we're not going to be wasting any nitrogen. So I hope you found that informative. Just a little bit on what goes behind the scenes into planning of the nitrogen applications going on. So um, yeah, that's it for the February update. Look forward to seeing you in March. I think March is going to be um, a busy month for getting a lot of the crops into the grounds. So we will see you then. <laughs>